Good day, and welcome to our seminar on Sage Merchant Services. In our last webinar, we talked about using the virtual terminal with Sage Merchant Services and how you can process credit cards directly in the virtual terminal. However, one of the big reasons that Sage has Merchant Services is so that they can integrate with their ERP software. That's where the real power comes in. Ease of use, you're not having to enter things twice, you can handle a transaction quickly and efficiently while you're on the phone with someone. Now, what I'm going to do today is walk you through how some of this is set up and how it operates. And we'll look at how you get transactions into the system and how it is communicating. So with that, if you can see my screen, you can see that I have Stage 100 ERP open. If you can see my other screen, which I will move over here for a moment, this is the virtual terminal, Sage virtual terminal. I'll leave that up on my other monitor. We don't need it right now. So to interact with the Sage virtual terminal, the system is registering the merchant account and some other information that it uses to cross-reference to the right merchant account in the system. And that's contained under the company code. So we'll pull up AFC and look at the credit card tab. And here we can turn credit card processing on, and then we have some setup options also. We have Sage Exchange Vault information. That's important because with the 4.4 release, we've changed over to the uh, using the Sage Vault to store credit card numbers so we could be PCI DSS compliant or at least not have to go through quite as much to be PCI DSS compliant. PCI DSS is payment card industry data security standards. So this is how we initially start the setup. We set up each company independently, and then we cross-reference that with our accounts receivable module and our payment types. Here we have our payment types, Amex, Discover, MasterCard, Visa. And with each of these payment types, we're logging the merchant account and the uh, Sage Exchange processing settings, which communicates with the which communicates with the cloud. Sage Exchange Vault is basically a cloud service that comes with the ERP software that lets the software pass the card number onto the cloud without leaving the card number back on the host system. So each credit card is set up. Pretty simple setup, nothing too difficult about it. Now, where can you actually process cards? Well, the screens have been modified when credit card processing is installed to allow for credit card processing directly on a sales order or on a sales order invoice or in cash receipt entry. So we'll look at each of those. If I come down to my sales order module and look at sales order entry, I see this fifth tab, which is credit card. I can start off an order, choose a customer, fill in all my information from my order, maybe put in some items, verify my totals tab. Now, when I'm on this page, this is where I denote what type of payment I'm receiving. It'll say deposit payment type. Here I can change this to credit card. And now the fifth tab activated, so I can go to the credit card number and actually put in a card number. Once I put in the information on the screen, which is the card number, payment type, all of this, a couple of pieces of information, um, the billing address for the card is pulled directly out of customer maintenance, out of AR. And as soon as I enter that, Sage Exchange window will pop up. And then it will ask me to enter the entire card number and the CVV code and the expiration date. And there I can check make sure the billing address is correct and the other information is correct before I hit submit. Once I hit submit, the information is brought back to this window and it is logged either as a transaction that's held in batch or a transaction that's already been pre-authorized. And the difference between those two things, whether it's processed in batch or whether it's pre-authorized immediately, is this checkbox down here where it says process in batch. If that is checked, then 
pending that submit on the stage exchange window will not push back an authorization number to me just yet until I actually update my register. The other place I can actually process a card immediately is an invoice data entry. I could pull up an invoice, pull up a customer, put my information in just like I normally would. This time I will invoke the uh, Sage Exchange all the way through. I'll show you the Sage Exchange screen. I have my totals page. I changed my deposit payment type to credit card. It invokes my credit card window. Then I can put in the customer's card number. Uh, card ID, a lot of times I've, I use the last four digits. It'll, the system will ask you whether or not you want to save the card for later use. So if you have a customer that's always paying with the same credit card, then you can keep it on file. Now, when I say on file, it's on file with the Sage, Sage Exchange Vault. The full card number is not within your ERP system. Your ERP system is holding references to it, so it knows how to go find it in the Sage Exchange Vault. but does not contain the entire card number. So I will say no. I'll say it's a payment type of visa, gives me an address, and I will hit submit card. Now it's referencing the invoice number, it has the total. At this point, if I actually had the card in hand, I could swipe the card. If I had the swiper hooked up to my computer, I can put in the card number and the expiration date, click next, shows me the billing information, click submit. This credit card transaction has been authorized. It came back with the authorization code, time, and that all happened because I did not have process and batch checked. So I'll cancel this. So basically, I did everything in one step. I invoiced them and I received payment all in one step. Now, if the invoice has already been posted and they later come back and say, well, would you please use this credit card to pay that invoice, what I would do in that case is go to accounts receivable main cash receipts entry. And this has all been modified to take credit card payments also. Here I would put in a credit card deposit amount, say so they're authorizing fifty dollars or hundred dollars or whatever it is, put it in there, customer number, take the next entry number, put in the amount received. I would assign it to the invoice being paid and then I would go to the credit card screen. So here I'm at the identical screen that I was just at on the sales order invoice data entry. And I would process it here and through Sage Exchange. It would come back with a transaction ID and authorization code. And then at that point I can accept it and print it and post it. That would update the customer and process the credit card. Then if I needed to verify anything and I wanted to confirm that all that was okay and it went through okay, I can go to my virtual terminal because all those transactions that I do in here are flowing from here through Sage Exchange to my virtual terminal. At the virtual terminal, I can monitor all my activity. Also within Sage itself, the ERP, I have specialized reports, settlement reports and deposit transaction reports that are related to credit card transactions. So you can see how easy it is to process directly in your ERP system without having to use a separate bank machine or having to process on some obscure website and then have to come back and re-enter everything into your ERP system. You can have the ERP system be a one-stop shop and handle all that for you. And that's why Sage Payment Services and their merchant services have become so popular with our Sage 100 customers.